So here we have the Make Noise Q Pass. Welcome to the video. It's a long, in depth, ultimate guide, mega tutorial to the Make Noise Q Pass. So reading the Make Noise website, the Quad Peak animation system combines the auditory enveloping of stereo spaced peaks with the animation of two or more peaks in a single channel dancing around each other or engaging in primitive vocalizations. QPass is quad core, containing four identical state variable filter cores with a control system powerful enough to guide them in a stereo multi-peak operation but simple enough to encourage system integration rather than domination. Now beyond this on the website, there's a great story from Tony Rolando, the designer and head of Make Noise, talking about when he worked at Moog calibrating Voyagers and a little bit of his kind of filter journey leading to the Q-Pass. So the Q-Pass is a stereo input filter, left and right in. We can operate in mono and then get stereo images out. We have a stereo VCA with level or level CV input if you put a CV in. We have cutoff with an attenuverter for frequency input 1 and a second unattenuated or unattenuverted input on freak 2. Each side of the filter, the left and right, has a radiate control that spreads out these peaks and kind of spaces these frequencies within the filter core, really obvious with some resonance. They have attenuverters in and their own modulation. The Q, or the resonance, again has an attenuverter and a modulation input. And we've got two wildcard inputs, these exclamation mark, upside down exclamation mark, mystery inputs. And these have deliberately been left vague so that it encourages you to explore. They're somewhat similar to strike inputs in that putting a triggering gives you a nice struck filter kind of sound. But they're not just strike inputs like, say, on the Make Noise Optomix. Both of these affect various things throughout the different filter cores. Despite their position on the panel, this isn't a left input for the wildcard and a right input. Both of them affect the whole filter and they respond differently. We have stereo low pass, band pass, high pass, and this SP smile pass, which is a little bit like a notch filter at certain settings, but it's a filter response curve that Tony designed where you don't lose low end or high end at the same time great for lush phaser sounds the timing index is on screen so do skip around leave questions in the comments go back skip around watch the whole thing absorb it however you wish let's get stuck in have a simple quite deep saw wave coming in from a simple analog oscillator 
Unity gain is around 2 o'clock on the input VCA, so we're at Unity, and I'll show you how this drives the input stage. It's not really distortion, but a nice thickening, certainly in the low end. Here's a quick sweep of the low pass. Lovely and smooth. Now, as we increase that input gain, there's the obvious level boost, but listen to the low end. Let's check out the band pass. Really nice crisp filter sweeps. High pass. Really smooth. Whether that low end disappears. And finally, the smile pass. Quite soft and subtle without resonance or any radiate. So that's just some raw basic filter sweeps. So here we've got a mono talking band pass out of the Q-Pass. It does look like I'm coming out in stereo, but one of these is just to feed the scope and give us some nice visualizations on data. And I'm just gonna switch up the octaves on this input saw wave. And removing that audio rate modulation, We've just got some lovely complex multi-peak filtering going on. So here we've got stereo tremolo, these quad animated peaks moving around in stereo. And just a kind of whole heap of awesomeness from both the Morphogene and the Q-Pass. Now I'll kind of break this down bit by bit to its kind of bass state. First, there's some stereo reverb and delay effects. Let me kill those. So this is the dry stereo straight out of the low pass on the Q pass. I have an input to the input level, giving us this tremolo-like effect, and I'm modulating a looping envelope for this. If I cut that modulation out, we get a really nice simple static looping modulation. Now, let's get rid of that. We've then got this crunchy down-sampled aliasing kind of audio rate sample and hold like top end through this second mystery input. I'm calling it the mystery input for now. And that's an oscillator's triangle wave right into that. And if I sweep the pitch of that down, all these lovely crunchy digital effects. But again, breaking this down, we'll remove it. We've got independent LFOs to the radiate per side, the resonance and the cutoff. And I could just kind of bathe in this sound for ages, certainly with a reverb afterwards.
So here's the cue pass as an end of chain effect. And simply just turn it down, the reverbs before the filter. So this is an oscillator into another filter, into some reverb, then into cue pass. And here I'm just going to simply use cue pass to create a stereo image. This is mono coming in. By simply using these radiate controls, especially with resonance, So by patching in LFOs, one that's an inverted version of the other, as you can see on the Modex data there. Get a nice auto pan effect. So here the cue pass is in the feedback loop around a delay. If I remove it by turning the VCA down, you can hear our patch. Now here it is dry, I'm gonna turn the dry wet down on the delay. Now it's a car plus strong synth sound with some sympathetic ringing strings. It's nice and pretty and melodic, so I wanted to leave that ringing in there. Now as I turn the delay up, you can hear it's just a single, simple, clean repeat. It's a simple digital delay. So I'm taking the sound out of the delay, into cue pass and back into a mixer. And that mixer has my dry input kind of sound source, the cue pass output, and that goes back into the delay, creating this feedback loop. So as I turn this up, the delay's output comes in, back out to the end of the delay, back out to cue pass, and there we go, feedback loop. And we can make really simple digital delays, absolutely gorgeous. With these nice resonant analog kind of peaky feedback trails. pass like with any feedback loop you just want to be careful of resonance and input levels got a little bit hot there but the actual tone of it it's just absolutely gorgeous And here's a patch showing the cue pass before a distortion, the miasma right next to it, to the left. And just as an expressive, resonant, peaky sound design tool to put in front of a distortion, to give the distortion lots to chew on. So my input is a saw wave, and I'm coming out of the bandpass, which you would think would cut quite a lot of frequencies out, both high and low end. But with these quad resonant peaks and some modulation, we can really animate it. It's quite aggressive sounds when we drive the hell out of it. So for those into things like the Doom soundtrack that's had a lot of attention recently for its sound design, or just heavier industrial noise, strap in, because <laughs> so we're going to explore it. The sound is side-chained against the kick and a hi-hat. Well, it's side-chained against the kick, but there's the kick and the hi-hat to playing. Which is why it's ducking. That's completely secondary, that's a VCA after my asthma handling this ducking. It just gives it some kind of musical context. Dirty electro, French electro kind of vibe. So let's just quickly play around. And there's some absolutely outrageous sounds that come out of this thing. It's just the saw wave on the way in. So I'm going to put a pitch sequence into the cutoff frequency and see what happens. Oh, that's really cool. Let's try a step sequence into one of the radiator inputs. Let's 
say accent pattern into the other radiator. And we could even try a gate pattern into that VCA to cut the sound in and out as well. Smile pass. So in this patch, we're going to do several things. First, simply sweeping around, playing with the filter. I'm going to perform with a reverb sender mount off screen alongside the cue pass. So it sounds this. We're going to look at creating bass boosts by using this high pass out and a high cue setting at a low cutoff where you just tune it in to kind of boost the bass with a big resonant peak. We're gonna look at imparting chord tones over the beat. We're gonna look at using envelope followers for input dependent modulation. And we're also gonna create a nice little phaser. But first, let's just kind of jam around a little bit. This input is super chaotic. It's this dry sound. Distorted compressed drums with a little random riff through some stereo delay, under a ton of modulation. So that's the dry input. I'll first just have a quick play around. So I'm going to kill the delay effects on this input and I'm going to kill the little synth riff in the pattern as well. So there's the dry input and let's look at using the Q pass as a bass boost. Simply turn radiate down on both sides and I'm going to turn the Q up and tune the cutoff to the point where it really boosts the bass. in and it will really boost the bass. Get some headphones on to really feel it or get some decent speakers cranked up. There's the input as is. And then boosting the cue. And just tuning that cut off to the point where the kick drum hits. You can hear that's a little bit too high. And of course you can nudge the cue back for a less extreme effect. Now we can start to impact chord tones over at the input by simply moving these peaks, the radiate settings for each side, and tuning those in to new chordal tones. And it almost sounds like modal synthesis, and we'll explore this imparting chord tones idea in another patch. Now bringing in that little synth line again and the delay effects, let's explore using an envelope follower to modulate the cue pass. And we'll get nice kind of auto filter like sounds. Let's try this with low pass filtering. Now let's take all of this input and create a nice phaser like sound by using the smile pass. Now of course it's a quite subtle filter type because we're not losing the low end or high end like we are from a low pass or a high pass, but as soon as you get some resonance in there and radiate out these peaks, there's some really nice phaser like effects. So I'll simply patch an LFO in to the cutoff and off we go. So in that last patch with the drum beat and a little random riff and the distorted beats and all that kind of thing, I went through quite a lot of different things and I just quickly want to go over some of those techniques again with just shorter, quicker patches. So here we're gonna use that smile pass output to create a phaser. 
And here's my input, currently no modulation through the Q pass. It's a simple cap of strong voice through a stereo delay. Now I'm going to use an LFO to modulate cutoff while we're in the smile pass outputs. So here's a different animated processed loop from the Morphogene. And again, I'll cancel everything out and take us back to where we were, like we did with the other Morphogene patch in this video. And it's the smile pass output and a much simpler loop from the Morphogene this time. It's not an animated one. There's no modulation of the Morphogene. Now getting the Q-Pass animated again under some LFO control. Lots of really lovely quad stereo peaks moving around. Now this sort of warm loop that's coming in would be great with the low pass and much less resonance. And it's like this little digital critter in the top end. But listen to the mids. There's this kind of... I mean, <laughs> I'm sure I sounded ridiculous then, but there's this kind of bubbling crunch in the mids as well as that fizzy top. So as soon as I saw that the Q-Pass has an input VCA, I wanted to explore AM synthesis and then use the filtering as the final part of the chain, almost like a low pass gate, to close down the sound. So here we've got a simple patch, it's two triangle waves from two oscillators, as you can see on data. The top wave is the input to the Q pass, the middle wave, the blue trace, is the modulator into the VCA. Now to fully make use of this triangle wave, I've added an offset to the triangle wave, so it's unipolar. So normally an oscillator wave swings between minus 5 volts and plus 5 volts, but a VCA isn't going to respond to a negative voltage, unless it's a ring modulator or a bipolar VCA. So I've just offsetted the modulator so that it's in a positive range instead of going negative. Here's the tone that it gives me. Nice and simple, and I'm going to play around with the tuning of the modulation source. You can see on the yellow trace, which is the output of the Q-Pass, at the same rate but slightly out of tune, we get a nice PWM detuned-like effect. Going up in octaves. There's a lot of interesting waves to be had. Now, with no resonance, and Tony from Make Noise talks about this actually having negative resonance in his video Perfect Circuit, where he's explaining how he likes really non-resonant low-pass gates, as you'd expect from things like the Optomix. So let's try an envelope into the low-pass to emulate kind of striking a low-pass gate. It's a really nice sound. If I pull the modulation, you can hear it's just a simple triangle and then that modulation on top for this AM overtone, amplitude modulation. I'm going to play around with that tuning again. And let's get a sequence going. So my input source is being sequenced here, but the modulator isn't. I'm going to patch that sequence over to the modulator to keep them in sync as the pitch moves. There's a lot of interesting tones to be had again. We can of course try different waves, let's say saw waves. And really nice overtones and I think AM is a massively underexplored synthesis method. Again closing down the filter. So in this patch, I wanted to see how good of a low-pass gate Q-Pass would make. And I think the patch you can hear says it makes a pretty good one. Let's turn off the delay. Now a low-pass gate is typically controlled by a Vactral. Now there's no Vactrals in the Q-Pass, we can try and emulate that with the modulation that we use. 
So by combining the input VCA and the low pass filter, we can mimic a low pass gate. So let's scale the modulation back and just go right down to the core of what's going on. I have an input sound that you can hear, unfiltered currently with a cutoff up full, no resonance, no radiate. It's mono to stereo out and I have an envelope into that input VCA. Very rich FM tone between two oscillators. So that's like a standard VCA. As I bring the filter cutoff down and then use that same exact envelope to control cutoff, we get this nice woody low pass gate like tone. Now, of course, because the VCA and the filter are separate here, we can set the filtering to be softer filtering or filter from nothing all the way up full. I'm sending a sequence to radiate here, which makes that right side sound slightly different, giving us a nice stereo image from the mono input and some delay. So here's a mono patch that's going to demo two things effectively. The first is how to double up the filter response to get a steeper response. Now these are two pole filters with a 12 dB per octave filter slope by default, but by patching it back on itself, you can get a 24 dB four pole style response from it as well. Now I'll remove the modulation and show you that first. So by default, a single left mono input comes out of both the left and right filter outputs and a simple 12 dB, as it is, sweep of that low pass sounds like this. But if I take the left output and patch it back to the right input, so I'm coming in, it's been filtered, and I'm patching it back into the right input, then taking the right output will give us this kind of dual low pass filtering. It's 12 dB on the first pass through and then another 12 dB curve on the way back for this 24 dB per octave four pole like response. And just so you can hear the difference, I'm gonna pull that cable in and out of the input and you'll hear the curve, how steep that cutoff is change. So that's the first part of this patch, a simple way of patching an output back to an input to get a different response. You can of course experiment with patching different flavors or types of filters back in. Let's try say the high pass. And we're getting a kind of more unique combined band pass there because the high pass output is obviously high passing. That's coming back to the input and then being low passed. Now the second thing here when we're doing this patching back on itself and going in mono is, we can actually use both radiates to create four peaks moving in mono. So I'm going to get the filter modulating. And because the left hand side is patched back to the input, these peaks are actually going to be filtered again by the filter as it comes back to the right output. But it absolutely does have an effect, we can feel these peaks moving around. And of course the peaks on the right side have an effect too. So some modulation to say the left hand peaks. You can animate that filtering before it comes back on itself and it's reprocessed again. Now another interesting modulation source is noise and patching that into the filter can create some interesting results as well. Listen how it gives that cue a really percussive edge and actually completely attenuates the actual resonance. Really kind of saturated distortion-like effect by putting it into radiate. It's instantly become a kind of weird drum machine groove box thing. 
having this stereo and quad core, so two poles or cores per side, is great for just shaping percussion sounds out of raw, bare bones, basic sounds. Like I said, this is just noise. So let me play around with the cutoff and the radiate. We get clap-like sounds, lower percussion hits, higher cymbal-like overtones. Much more hi-hat like there. I've sped this up and just closed the envelope down a little bit on the VC8, the input. So there's a lot of tonal shaping, but again, that cue that bit higher and trying to tune in these radiate controls, we can get all of these peaks tuned like a chord tone. And it might be a weird chord tone, but it's certainly a set of intervals and that makes up a chord. And again, it's very modal synthesis-like in style. Now, because we've got the input, we could also play around with the input level and get more dynamic, expressive control out of the filter. So I've added an offset voltage to some sample and hold modulation, and I'm gonna bring up the level of the sample and hold. So the noise goes through an external VCA shaped by an envelope that's coming into Q-Pass and then a random voltage is controlling the level of the input VCA on Q-Pass for some dynamics and some more expressive, interesting, human-like sounds. So here's a Morphogene reel from Noah Kalos. This is MS20 reel, a great melodic, layered up MS20 synth reel. You can download for free, like all the Morphogene reels on their free sound page. It's going into some reverb around 50-50 wet and then into the Q-Pass with various unsynced LFOs modulating the parameters. And even without the cutoff modulated, which sounds lush, there's still a ton of animation by just kind of spinning these radio controls with this dual peak per side quad peak stereo action. And that morphogen reel through the reverb then swelling through the filter somehow feels really kind of orchestral. Brassy swells and string like higher kind of overtones. It's really interesting. So here I'm pinging the Q pass and creating this nice little techno riff with it. Muting out everything but the stereo out of Q pass. Some nice little kind of digital clangorous spice to add to your techno. So in this patch, I just wanted to build up a big stereo drone that uses each of the filter state outputs in stereo into different unique effects to build up this big swirling stereo drone. So hopefully you can make out through this cable spaghetti the left low pass, right band pass, left high pass, right smile pass out into delays and reverbs, totally through independent effects chains. Hard pan left and right in my mixer across four channels. And the inputs are two unique wavetables. You can see those on data. And I've got various bits of modulation across the wildcard inputs, the radiate inputs and the frequency. So I'm calling this patch Weird Acid. This acidic 303 style or acid house style resonant filtering. Now there's a few different layers and a kick going on. 
And by a few different layers, I mean of modulation. I'll cancel them out and go through what's going on. So this is a simple saw wave, pitch sequence to the oscillator, oscillator straight into the Q pass. And the first bit of modulation is the VCA. It has a simple 16th note envelope. It's quite a long decaying release though, so there's not much overlap. But if I tighten that up, that's the input VCA. Long enough decay and release that it's just giving it some shape, it's not really cutting it in and out. I then have a slower gate rhythm playing an envelope, controlling the cutoff. There's already kind of two layers of modulation there. Then with some resonance, some Q, and a gate pattern to the attenuverter, the CV input for Q. We're getting some nice little resonant accents as well. We then have a sequence going into both of the radiator inputs. And yeah, it's like some kind of weird acid. So we know that the Q-Pass doesn't self-oscillate at full resonance settings. But pinging a filter, which is something we've already explored, is great for creating percussion. So I wondered, does the Q-Pass make a good kick drum? Yes, it absolutely does make a good kick drum. And here it is. Really nice low end, good thump to it. It's been gate sequenced by... Rene. So, taking the pitch modulation out, this is simply the low pass output and a gate into the audio input, the idea of pinging it. You get some nice soft 808-ish kind of booms. Now I like a kick, we've got a hard transient. So I've got the gate output split into an envelope module and I'm gonna put a fast decaying envelope into the filter cutoff. And it gives us a hell of a kick. Playing with the Q, the cutoff, and the mod dev. There's some great kicks to be had. Completely secondary to Q pass, here's a clap and a hi hat. But then I got wondering, what other percussion can we get out of this? So let's mute the clap and the hi-hat. I'm going to set up a pattern that just plays on two and four. And I'm going to inject some noise into this patch. Let's start with frequency two. Ooh, we get some nice kind of sub-wobble after that hit. Tightens up if we lower the cue. And we can hear that noise bleeding through a bit, but... Quite a cool snare. So let's get a four to the floor kick that's secondary to this. I'm just gonna use a bass drum module and the hi-hat back in. Now, of course, the cue pass is pretty loud here, but that's what I'm demoing, so I'm gonna leave it up. There's some interesting tones to be had. Let's try noise into that wildcard input. Spread out these peaks with the radiator controls. So here's a really simple patch that mimics a basic echo. Now I have an envelope playing quarter note, just keeping time on every beat of the bar, going into the filter cutoff and the VCA. It's the same envelope. And then a faster, and in this case a 16th note clock, playing four notes for every one, you can see it there on Rene, feeding that wildcard input. Taking it out, super simple sound but by kind of re-pinging, striking, wildcard modulating cue pass, we get this nice trailing echo. Now, of course, the envelope keeping the VCA open has to be long enough, otherwise it doesn't have anything to work with. You could even remove it and just modulate the filter. 
and get some interesting sounds. It's more rhythmic, much deeper, much fuller, less like a decaying echo, but still very interesting. Now let's change the clock feeding Rene, say quintuplets, five notes for every one of the envelope. Eighth notes, two per envelope, triplets, back to sixteens. Let's say quintuplets again. And of course I could use a gate rhythm. We're actually taking the gate out of Rene. It doesn't have to be this steady clock. Let's go to 16s again. We can impart something rhythmic in there rather than a steady clock, but it's much less like a basic echo at that point. So in this final patch, I just wanted to explore some more complex voices. There's the Qubit Scan and QPass. Coming out of QPass in stereo, straight to the mixer. Now between them, there's a lot of interesting, more complex synthesis going on. If I kind of cancel out the modulation on QPass and just fully open the filter, that's the sound that's coming in. Now I'm using a 16th note envelope to strike the first wildcard input. If I put that in the VCA, you can hear exactly what that's doing. But combining that through the wildcard input with an envelope into this first frequency input, we have a nice mixture of longer envelope to frequency and tighter envelope to the wildcard input. There's another LFO to the second frequency input, a gate pattern to radiate, LFO to the right hand radiate. Another LFO to the Q. Finally, some audio rate modulation into that second wildcard input. So this has been a long video, an in-depth uber tutorial, mega whatever you want to call it. Hope you found that useful and it's given you some ideas of how to get the most out of QPass and also some other ideas for your other modules too. Support the work that I do on patreon.com forward slash divkid. Hit like, comment, subscribe, share this video. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.